as well as the convener of the I'm trying to get the correct uh, of um, the public interest advocacy network you're welcome thank you very much it's nice to be here all right, I will start with um, this, uh, the whole development, you know. What's, what's, what is your take on this development as regards the Supreme Court's judgment yesterday? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, speaking as a lawyer, it's always best to have read the judgment, you know, before you comment on it. But it's too soon after the judgment, you know, was delivered yesterday and there's so much euphoria about it in the media. So I must confess that I've not read the judgment, but I've read a lot of analysis about it, you know, and the national euphoria that greeted that judgment. And I think it's a welcome development. It's a welcome development for Nigeria because um, since 1999, when we started practicing this, uh, our current uh, version of democracy and started operationalizing our 1999 constitution. You know, the local governments have always been under the ampit of the governors. And the governors, you know, cleverly devised a means of seizing the funds that legitimately belong to the local governments and emasculating them completely. If you realize that we have 774 local governments across Nigeria, you will discover that that's the closest arm of government to the people. And so if they are properly funded and they are running properly, you know, then you can expect that the development that we all crave for the country will permeate the entire country, you know, virtually at the same time. You know, and it's not as if it's uh, rocket science. The constitution is very clear. You know about the fact that there are three tiers of government the federal government the state government and the local governments and all of them have their own constitutionally you know uh, recognized spheres of influence how the governors manage to corner the local governments and make them an appendage of the states and virtually impose gov governance on them you know without expecting such imposition from the federal government it's the it's the ingenuity that is still amazing me up to today mm -hmm. and why it took you know the federal government suing the 36 state uh, states of the federation you know to be able to achieve what was achieved yesterday you know and why it took so long for such a move to be made is something that still beats me hollow you know but we must commend the current attorney general of the federation chief latif fabemi sen you know, for actually spearheading this and demonstrating that things can still happen through the court system. You yeah. know, because Nigerians had actually virtually lost um, confidence in the court system. But with the sort of judgment that the uh, Supreme Court has been coming up with lately, you know, the, the dignity and the, you know, the um, reputation of the judiciary is beginning to be restored because we are beginning to see big things happen from the courts. No, no, no. Let's look beyond the euphoria of um, the uh, the acceptance of the judgment coming from the Supreme Court. Questions are beginning to be asked. Reality is beginning to set in, and one of the realities that's been said that is beginning to set in is um, the local government system. Do you think they are actually ready to operate from a place of financial autonomy? Definitely. I have no doubt in my mind that the local governments have always been ready. You know, it's a matter of building capacity, you know. I don't know why the state governors believe that they are better at managing funds, you know, than the local governments. You know, and so they must tell the local governments how to run their, their finances. Nobody is telling the governors how to run their finances. And we've seen a lot of thiefing governors, you know, on the run after the, their tenure, you know, like Yayabelo now, for instance. You know, it's totally shameful. So, if we are below a local government chairman, I'm sure he will behave exactly the same. And we have several of these kind of examples since 1999. So, nobody's, you know, that, and anybody who can be a state governor can also be a local government chairman and, and vice versa. So, the issue of local government don't have capacity and so on, I think it's just an imposition. It's a perception that is very fraudulent, very, you know, demonic. 
and coined deliberately to emasculate the local governments who had actually i think the most important tier of government you know in the country because the average man on the streets doesn't really care about the federal government and the state government if the local governments are functioning properly because that's where you know the bread and butter issues like agriculture like road networks like education for their children and all that should be handled from but here we are you know the local governments cannot even construct a corvette you know the money comes at the end of the, at the, at the, the allocation comes goes into a, a supposed joint account where they have no control over because the, most of the local governments are uh, uh, caretaker because the governors can uh, at their whim and caprice you know dissolve the local governments for any reason or for none and then and then, and then put their cronies there who will not be able to you know to challenge anything that the governor does because they are the ones who appointed them you know i really don't know how we could have allowed this to happen you know 25 years into our current democratic experience you know but i think this is a it's, it's worth celebrating i think it's worth you know entrenching and it's worth insisting on you know so that the governors don't come for uh, with any other guys you know to frustrate you know the execution of this uh, judgment by the by by the supreme court now let's look at um, the challenges. Some some people are already saying that, for instance, for some of the um, states where local government chairmen were elected, we've seen that it's as though it was just the uh, the state's governor uh, appointing this local government chairman through their state elect independent electoral commissions, and so for that reason, they're saying that there is still no clear cut autonomy. Of local government because this local government chairman are still under the influence of the state government for you what other challenges do you think the local government autonomy might face in at this uh, inception yes that's a very clever question and i think um, that's also agitating the minds of a lot of analysts at the moment you know 